Hey guys, welcome back. More Callus Invitational 3 Round 2 Lower Bracket content here. That means this is in fact an elimination match and wow, it's <laughs> gonna be tough to see one of these players go. We've got the defending champion, Cowboy Dan, who had a nice little three game set with a load in round one but did not come out on top. And Jimmy Turtwig, not known as an ADV guy, but one of the most versatile and overall best old gen players as a whole. Very, very well respected and sought after on the highest level tours. Jimmy went to three with Eden's Embrace in the first round, but obviously since he's here in the lower bracket, that didn't go his way either. And now one of these players will meet the end of their tournament. Unfortunate that it's one of these players, but that is just the nature of the tournament where no matter what, some very, very good players are not going to make it all the way. So, let's see who makes it and who does not. Here is the set between them. Game one and a best of three. Cowboy Dan is Little Johnny Jewel. He's on the bottom, and he's got him a champ lead straight off the bat against Jimmy Turtwig on the top with a meta. Meteor Mash hits the switching in Zapdos here. Pretty good chunk, 32%. Blissey comes into the zap. And Dan is not able to predict the special wall and get the Machamp in on it. That would have been a nice play, but very early on to be doing things like that. Machamp comes in on it now and is going to get S-tossed on the way in. See if Machamp has lefties. It does. And there's no sand in play either at the moment. Starmie coming in. And it is just the straightforward cross chop that would have rocked Blissey's world there. But with the imperfect 80% accuracy, it does miss on Starmie. Wow, risky to do that into Machamp. Had the Machamp stayed in there and gotten Thunder Waved, it would have triggered the Guts ability and the thing would have been very dangerous. I'm not sure about that play from Jimmy. He either is not familiar enough with Machamp and ADV or maybe didn't even know that it had Guts or he was really, really confident that there would be a switch. But there is definitely a great deal of risk in that play. Wow, Machamp does not take hits super well though. Earthquake from 88% is going to just one, one shot knock it out. I guess that's a choice band flag on, but man, Machamp, I thought had a little bit more physical bulk than that. I wonder if it's just like max attack, max speed, or something like that, which is not the spread that I like on Machamp, but it really, I'm surprised it didn't live there. Maybe that was a maximum roll, and it's some like oddly not at all bulky Machamp. I have to ask Dan about that after the game, but I don't want to get too far behind here. Jimmy did take the lead with that surprising knockout, so we've got ourselves a 6-5 situation. Zapdos on meta once again. This time the Meteor Mash does not connect with the Zapdos. It did, what, 35-ish, I think we said last time? Something like that. In that vicinity. There's a Thunderbolt on the Bliss here. The Blob comes in, takes 18%. There's still no sand in play, so all the bulky stuff is going to stay bulky. Lax comes in on Flygon that I would say is almost definitely Choice Banded. Mens comes in for the Intimidate. And there is Rock Slide, 62%. Decent chunk on that. So that's gotta, gotta, gotta be banded. And as such, Meta's going to come in here. Jimmy knows that a Rock Resist is going to come in, so he's going to switch as well. That's smart to get ahead of it. And we end up with Meta on Meta. Starmie in now for Jimmy Turtwig. There's Earthquake. We know that this Starmie has T-Wave, so it is probably a bulky star. And Meta itself might not want to get hit with a T-Wave, so he's got to be aware of that. Instead, Jimmy opts for Surf, since he thought maybe Lax would come in anyway. And there's no point T-Waving it. Might as well get some damage off. Not that it was a lot of damage, but it's better than T-Wave would have been. And now Meta switches in on Lax, which is going to be fully paralyzed. We have seen Focus Punch, but he didn't try it that turn. Zapdos again switches into Meta, as it has consistently throughout the game. Takes 33% this time on the way in, but he's going to live two more of those, pending an attack raise on the first one, or of course, a critical hit. Mash comes down again, 21%. There is an attack raise this time for Jimmy. He's not locked on that, though. Earthquake is a threat. He does have lefties this whole time. So now Zapdos comes in thinking it would be an Earthquake turn. He's right. That's going to be free leftovers for Dan and for Zapdos. Blissey coming in at this point, despite the meta being at plus one, does not like the matchup. And again, it does 18%, just as it did last time. Blissey takes that pretty well. Meta comes into Bliss, and it is just S-Toss, 27%. Meta from Dan also has leftovers. Starmie coming into that now is vulnerable to a crit here, 
but Meteor Mash is going to miss. Crit Earthquake there would have killed it, but he didn't even go for that, and he did not connect with the Mash either, so a bit unlucky for Dan. He's going to go Protect here, which is not going to work, but he gets it with the Flygon, so now the Flygon is useless because you can just Protect against it no matter what it does and scout its Choice Span move. And Jimmy, of course, switches in this situation, but this still works out fine for Dan. He's going to get three protects off in a row. The third one finally going to actually happen, and he's going to get a lot of free turns of leftovers here to significantly heal his Metagross with really no drawback for doing so. Lax comes in now to Starmie, 18% from Surf. Still no sand for either guy, so Lax is very healthy and bulky here. Surf and... Full power at a bad time. That was probably just a body slam turn. Surf again. And wow, full power again. The Lax does not want to get out of its wheelchair and make a move. It's been fully paralyzed at least three times already. Here's Meta. And there's a third full power in a row for Cowboy Dan. In fact, I'm having deja vu as I say that. I'm pretty sure he had three full powers in a row. I don't know if it was with Lax or not. Actually, I think it was. I think he had three full powers in a row earlier in the tournament then ended up self-destructing for just a trade to negate a lot of those hacks. But still, three full power in a row on Lax is something that I think happened to Dan twice in this tournament, which is pretty weird and unlikely given the mathematical improbability of it and given the fact that it was the same player with the same Pokemon in a tournament that has only played two rounds so far. So if somebody wants to calculate what the odds of that are, Go for it. I, I don't know what it is, but it can't be good. Starmie on Lax here. And it is just a self-destruct. 83% to meta is a nice chunk, but it's not a knockout. And it's going to be now a 6-4 to four lead for Jimmy, who still has two unrevealed. Noting that there's one unrevealed for little Johnny Jewel. But he's going to get knocked out by a critical hit earthquake here. Things going from bad to worse for Dan, who's now way behind with only three Pokemon against the full team of six for Jimmy. He doubles back to T-Tar here, trying to get it in on Bliss. He's successful in that. Good play for Dan. He's going to have to set this up and go for the DD sweep if he wants to win this. And for the sake of Fly on. He needs to have Ice Beam, which he shows right now that he does. He's going to get Thunder Waved, however, because he over-predicted on the Ice Beam. And that's bad because he doesn't have Lumberry. That power is going to stick, and that makes the T-Tower much less likely. In fact, almost impossible that it sweeps. But it does not look like a Dragon Dancer anyway. He's shown Ice Beam and Brick Break, which together mean that it is not a Dragon Dancer. Here comes Magneton. There's Brick Break. Big damage on that. Super effective, 56%. But Mag definitely faster because of the Paralysis. Thunderbolt will hurt a lot. 45%. Brick Break is a knockout, so that's great. Dan is on the board, but it might be too little too late. He's far behind right now. Nothing really wants to switch into Starmie. Granted, I think its only attack is Surf. I think it's a bulky star with Surf, T-Wave, Recover, and Rapid Spin. That will be enough to kill the T-Tower here, leaving Dan with only two Pokemon, one of which is this Salamence. An unusual switch here, since that clearly does not want to be hit with a Thunder Wave. And that is exactly what happens. Mence is going to be paralyzed. Hidden power there. Not even a crit would have killed. But a non-crit here. Only 43% from what, like I said, is a bulky Starmie. So he takes that hit just fine. Blissey switches in at this point. And Mence is going to DD up anyway. Curiously on the switch. Blissey here, we don't know if it is Ice Beam. Estos T-Wave is what it's shown. It obviously has Soft Boiled, and the last move, as we find out, is in fact Ice Beam. That's going to leave Dan with only Zapdos, and I have a real hard time imagining how somehow Zapdos alone is going to get it done from this position. In fact, it can be a guarantee that it doesn't, because Starmie can simply Thunder Wave it to paralyze it, making Metagross faster than it, and at that point, Metagross simply uses Explosion. So I believe this game is all but over, and we are just going through the motions. Dan agrees, and he is going to concede at this point. Jimmy Turtwig takes this game, and Cowboy Dan, the defending champion of the tournament, the winner of the entire tournament last year, is one game away from being knocked out at the first possible opportunity, which is round two. We'll see if he can avoid that and make a deep run in this tour as he has in both of the previous Callus Invitationals coming up next. Thumbs up if you enjoy the video.